Hello again, this is Pejman Rusty, and this is the second video of the of the series of the introduction to the to the ML flow for uh, for for TensorFlow. So in the first video, we saw that how we can implement the uh, ML flow to our uh, CNN code. So we use the classification uh, CNN, but it's not limited to that. You can you I, I think you understand that we can use it in any any code. So it can be segmentation, object detection, or whatever the code uh, or or uh, the code is is that okay. Now we go further and I show you how we can use it uh, in the codes that uh, in the code that we create several models. So it means that we do the hyper parameter uh, uh, tuning and. Uh, we, with that we, we modify some some parameters and each time it create a, a model okay so if I back to my code so this time I open another code got a multi a multi um what I do here I just change the code not in the term of the ML flow because ML flow you see that is the same but change the code in the way that it automatically change the some some parameters okay and then we'll uh, we will we run the the code okay so let's see uh, here similar to the previous one we have the the tensorflow and some uh, libraries that we we need and import mlflow and mlflow tensorflow similar to the the one previous one and here I use the mlflow tensorflow.autolog to to take the log automatically from all the parameters I didn't touch this part, so this is the the loading of the of the database of the MNIST. As I said, uh, we can use it in any other uh, other databases. So in another example, we will uh, we will see when I use my own uh, my own database. And here I said that okay, uh, I wanted to to define uh, to change some hyperparameters. For example, I will change optimizer. At the beginning, I use uh, Adam uh, with uh, here I just put two epochs to to be fast. Uh, uh, and then uh, filters, I thirty two filters. Number of layers is two. Then I will say that okay for the next uh, the, the next model, I wanted to have the optimizer st stochastic gradient descent. Um, the it can be different uh, number of epochs. It uh, filters sixty four and number of layers three and so on. Okay, we can define <coughs> what are the the models that we we, we need uh, to to create or parameters that we need to to create. It's not really. Um, uh, corresponding to this uh, the, this code uh, to this this video about the memory flow, but usually when we are working on the on the the, the, um, the hyperparameter tuning, we change one parameter at a time. Okay, we don't change several parameters at a time. So we remain on one parameter. For example, optimizer, we change it. The rest are fixed. And then, for uh, if we want, we can keep the one of them. Then we um, we change, for example, the number of layers or number of filters. But here. I, uh, the aim of this video is go more on the ML flow, so I change several things at the same time. Okay, just uh, for this, but it's for for this this purpose. So let me to run it at the same time. So here, the same we create the um, the, the function that create the model. The, it, we have the initial model, so of the first layer. And then here based on the, the number of layers that we, we we define at the beginning, so it will it will change it uh, based on the different uh, code. Then we flatten dense layer and uh, the the output. Okay, uh, it's not uh, anything about the the ML flow. It's just making the CNN models. And then uh, here as uh, we change the optimizers and so on. So here is the function that will define uh, different type of training, so the filters and uh, pokes and so on. And we, I create the model. So similar to the previous code. So we have we should define the um, the experiment. So here we define new. I can change it to the this classification, for example, page one. Anyway. And then uh, with MLflow start run, uh, this is something that we can uh, we can um, we can we can go further. So I previous time I just used the uh, lag parameters. I defined the optimizer and uh, I wrote the text uh, the fixed one. But as it's uh, ch change every time for the, the, the different model, so I put a variable that I defined it at the beginning optimizer epoch filters and so on so each time for each model it will change and we'll, uh, we'll save the based on that the compile is exactly the same as we, we used before 
uh, fitting is the exactly the same as we, we we did so if i even go you see that there is no no changement on that and similar to the previous one uh, we do the the validation and we say that which metric we wanted to to save okay we said that test loss and uh, test accuracy uh, at the end, we also want to uh, save the model, but before saving the model, as we have several models, it's better to give a name for that. So I define a model name uh, after a miss model, and then I define the name based on the optimizer, epoch, and so on. Then later, when I go and see on the dashboard, I can uh, distinguish it uh, uh, properly. So I don't know if I uh, need... Okay, and this is the last one. Uh, and here I just uh, run the model. Okay, so I will unzoom it. Uh, as you remember, I said that I would just put two epochs. Again, two epochs is not enough to evaluate the model. But here is not the aim is not to uh, have the, the best model. It's just to track different different type of mo uh, models. Okay, so it go for the create the first model um, and will give us the. Um, uh, the the metrics. Meanwhile, it's creating is we can go to the, to the dashboard of the ML uh, ML flow and see what we what we we have. So I open a new uh, window uh, terminal. So in the terminal, if you remember well. So let me zoom it. So I just changed to go to my virtual environment from the FT. Wait. Flow, and then uh, I go to the uh, the destination of my the, the, the repository that I save my codes, and then here I will write ML flow UI user interface. Okay, when I run it, it it on the on the local server. I copy and uh, paste it here in a tab okay and here you see that it create a new experiment with the name of the MNIST classification page mount okay till, uh, till uh, now it's two two of the model created so let's back to to the code you see that the third one is, is in the uh, uh, it's going so we see the first one is created the second one is created now it's going to run the, the third one it's the the reason that here I have we have two models okay that it's, it's run so if i save them if i zoom on that so let's take the uh, the one okay and here you will see that uh, similar to the previous one here it give all the information about that and we will uh, we will see this and we have the model metrics for the for the curves and, and artifacts but what is important here is uh, that it in list all the models that we we are, we are creating so uh, sometimes we are creating 10 models so uh, different parameters that we change one at the other time so we have all of them here and we can go and see each of them uh, in terms of the um, the evaluation or term of the the model all of them are, are saved uh, are saved here okay so that was the mm, short explanation about uh, how we can use it when we are creating uh, several several model and here we can realize that when we have just one model for example a mistake classification new here we can see uh, one uh, one model here but when we uh, or code create several models we can have it uh, here all of them okay so this is what we we can do on uh, on uh, on the local machine so you, we use the local machine uh, as a server and we we run it on that another possibility is that some of us we are using the collab so maybe we, because we don't want to install the the package in our, our system or it's more easier on the on the collab and so on so uh, how we can use ml flow when we are uh, using the um, the collab codes here i give you an example of that so here is the code that i wrote on the on the on the ml uh, on the on the collab okay 
uh, just a simple uh, simple classical um, uh, classical CNN okay and when, and when we want to integrate in, in that so uh, first we should install the ML flow because it's not installed by default on the on the collab so we install it and another thing that we need here we need a server because in the previous code we saw that we use the local server uh, and we, we show it there but here we are online so we need the online um, online server so either we go on the azure uh, aws uh, google cloud OVH, or any uh, any online server okay to to do that and then um, give the authentication or the tokens here to save it there or to be simple to be test to test it what we we can do i will show you show it to to you here so there is a website maybe some of you already uh, work with that uh and uh so on the and grok so this is the the website that we can sign up for for free it give us a temporary server to do some that and it's quite good for the testing okay so you wanted to see if it works or, or not this is the the good uh, good good environment so i like you know i already signed sign up i have an account okay and here this is the one that uh, that uh, that i have okay i don't explain the ngrok uh, so there's a documentation you can go and, uh, and look at that um, but uh, i will sh i will show you how we can use it in the in a code so here when we install the flow now we should go and install the the pi and grok uh, this is the for the for the python okay i install it here and then i import them ml flow and ngrok okay so when i import them so i should make a connection between the collab and my my server to save the um, the information on the on the server so uh, here i just uh, use some lime so to take the authentication and so on so if i run it it will ask a token from me so it's still installing that uh, when it uh, arrives here i think it's okay it's good it arrives here so it asks for the the token authentication token so if i go on the end rock here on on left you see that it's written your, your authentication token so here on the on the left uh, left menu and if you uh, select it so here is the the authentication token you can copy it and back to your code save it here okay enter and then the rest it's exactly the same as the one that we we had previously so i will show you to you here so we use the ml flow tensorflow auto lock to take the auto lock of the of everything and then here instead of mnist i'm using my own uh, own database that i i saved in my my google uh, google cloud uh, google drive so here it wants to add to my google drive make a connection between the collab and my my google drive okay that is done and the rest are the the simple code for the um, for the cnn classification or classical cnn classification sorry here uh, the the comments are in uh, in french because this is the code that we we are using for one of the old courses here at university of angers um but here yeah, it's just uh, importing some uh, libraries then uh, i use the function to load the data uh, resize them and do the the normalization of the of the data put them in the, the form and here i unzip the uh, the data that are in my uh, my my google uh, google cloud okay this is the database but well, this is the the existing database uh i i downloaded it from uh, from from kaggle okay but it's not the whole database it's a part of the database and here it is the uh, the, the database of the of, of leaves uh, and we have the different symptoms and, and so on 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 that okay so here when i unzip them we see the the name of the um, the classes that we we have on that i don't take all of them because it takes uh, times i just uh, took the three of them to be to, to be fast okay i reload the data okay but the function that i define here uh, split it into the training validation and, and testing and here i do a visualization of of the of the data 
there's some visualization on that and then uh, give some information about the size of our, our database classical cnn model with couple of uh, cnn uh, cnn uh, layers or convolutional layers okay and then uh, flatten and drop out similar to the code that we had on the local machine compiling that simply and here we are just using so here we for taking the history i import the history and then here similar to the the um, other codes that we, we saw we have the ml flow start that will start here and then i take the the parameters of that so like a epoch a batch size and so on i fit the model exactly the same as the one that we did on the local machine here i just take a callback of the history because i use the history later uh, for for making the curve and so on and the log matrix uh, of the loss and uh, loss and accuracy and here is to making the curve i i use this okay if i run this so it has start to uh, to run the the code on my my data okay the the limitation that we have as the ngrok is i use it for the for the free and it's the free version of that so actually it doesn't give us the possibility to save uh, physically or, or model uh, to deployment but it's quite good to to do the tracking okay if you wanted to do the tracking of the of your model when you change the when you do the hyperparameter tuning okay while it's um, it's running i think it will be finished soon so i can go and open my um, uh, my my dashboard so here when we put the authentication token it gives us a link okay if i click on link and visit the website this is the same dashboard that i had uh, before but this time is for uh, um, on the on the on the collab so if i open it i you can see that i have this almost the same type of information as i had in the on the local uh, local server here and uh, in the metric uh on that uh, on the on the metrics that we we have here and then if i unzoom it so if i go to the artifacts here as i said we don't have the physical model on that to to save it so we don't have anything here but i can have the the curves and and use them okay this is how we we can use it on the on, on collab uh for as I said, a toy example and then for more uh, serious project and so on so we can use the online on, online servers so that was uh, the topic that i wanted to to talk about them uh, here in this uh, in this in this video we saw together how we can implement the ml flow simply in the existing code or if you are writing it from the from the scratch you can you can implement it and how we can use it on the the local server or uh, on, on the on the collab don't hesitate to write uh, your question uh, in the comments of uh, this this video. I try to respond to to them as soon as possible. Have a good time and see you in another video.